Hi everyone, I'm AJ Wilcox, and I am really glad you joined the session today about LinkedIn ads, because it's by far one of my favorite topics on the planet. Uh, I talk about LinkedIn ads being the silver bullet for the business-to-business -business marketer, and really the reason is the targeting is so good around job titles and company size and company industry and all of that, that it becomes uh, wonderful for your sales team to start getting these leads from the exact right people that they want to talk to. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll give you a quick download on who should and shouldn't be advertising, what you need in order to get started, and basically make you a superpower uh, when it comes to approaching the platform. So what should you be considering LinkedIn ads for? Well, here are a couple clues. If you are using search platforms like Google Ads or Bing Ads, but there just aren't more people typing your keyword, you've maxed out the available search volume, then maybe it's good to start looking at LinkedIn ads. Alternatively, if you're using Facebook ads, but you're, the sales team is either complaining about the lead quality that's coming from them, or you've hit the limits of scale, you just, you due, to link, or due to Facebook's limited targeting around B2B, you have a hard time just reaching more of the right people, then LinkedIn's probably gonna be a really solid answer for you. There's some great things about it. We mentioned the targeting, but what I want to really bring up to you here is that it's the best business targeting of any platform, and it's at scale. There are very, very few companies who have more budget than they actually have uh, available people to target on LinkedIn. Uh, it's, you know, on Facebook, if you're using job title targeting, for instance, you're reliant on the four to six percent of people who bother to even put that information into their profile, whereas LinkedIn had it from the time you created a uh, your profile, you know, time zero. Um, so because of that, and we have something like 95% of white collar professionals in North America, and the platform's really growing very quickly outside as well. So amazing targeting at, you know, near infinite scale as far as your budget's concerned. Next, we tend to keep our profiles up to date uh, because our LinkedIn profile is a reflection of our professional selves, and we tend to be very proud of that. Uh, at least I know I am. So because of that, when an advertiser is targeting me, they're they're tar they're not wasting impressions on me because I forgot to update it, and you know I'm I have you know, a, a whole position ago or a whole company ago uh, still listed. Also, when someone is on LinkedIn, they're in the right mindset. You know, that they're thinking about their job or their career, and that puts them in a really solid mindset for converting on an, any sort of offer that uh, really augments either their job or their career. And then finally, LinkedIn ads closes the largest deal sizes when you compare it with uh, all the other ad channels. Um, you know, this is a study we've done three or four times where you know, you measure all of the different ad channels, you watch all the way through revenue, and LinkedIn uh, always ends up closing the largest deal sizes. They have the most qualified prospects. Um, it's interesting, if you're looking for speed, if you're looking for closing business the fastest, Google Ads always closes deals the fastest. So those are kind of the split personality there. Now, LinkedIn ads are certainly not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some real challenges. It's the first, and some of these get a little bit technical, but the first is the cost. Most people will complain about the cost on LinkedIn because we pay somewhere between about six to nine dollars US per click. Uh, that is quite a bit more expensive than, than Facebook, for instance. Um, we also don't have the ability to target by device like you do on pretty much every other network. So you just pretty much have to make sure that your page, your landing page experience, is really good on both desktop and mobile. We also don't have day parting or ad scheduling. And with a business to business focused network, you could imagine how important that might be to have uh, the ability to, to show your ads only during the workday. There's also no uh, transparency into how you rank compared to uh, your competitors using LinkedIn ads. Um, you just, you know that uh, if you're doing really well, you're not paying as much per click. And if you're doing really poorly, your ads just kind of shut off without you knowing. Um, and so th we call this relevancy score on Google, it's called quality score, but it's basically a measure of how, uh, how often you make money for the network and you just don't really have visibility into that on LinkedIn. Okay, so who is a good fit for LinkedIn ads, uh, especially because of the cost? Well, we know business to business lead gen, which I'm sure the majority of you are, are interested in here. Uh, this would be like, 
targeting someone for a deal uh, where the lifetime value is going to be, call it $15,000 or more, that's going to be an absolute no-brainer uh, on LinkedIn ads. It also tends to work really well for white-collar recruiting or higher education recruiting, so like MBA programs, for instance. All right, so any time that I'm thinking about social advertising, I like to think of this acronym AMMO, and I, I think bring my AMMO to social media advertising. And it's the three elements that are going to be needed for any time you do a social campaign. So first, you need to understand your A, audience, then your M, message, and then finally O, your offer. Now, audience is really the targeting, and that's where LinkedIn excels. The message is kind of a combination of the ad format you decide to use, which we'll go over here in a moment, uh, but as well as imagery or video you might use and some ad copy. And then finally, offer is by far the most important part of any ads uh, campaign, especially on LinkedIn, because if you just have an ad up there that just says, uh, you know, here's what we do, click here to buy or click here to talk to a sales rep, no one has any sort of incentive to click on that ad, and so your ads will just stop being shown and they'll shut off. Uh, so instead, we have to provide something of value first before we ask, at least in most cases. So we'll spend a little bit of time on offers as well. So the targeting, this is the, the audience part of Ammo, and LinkedIn does this amazingly well. This is just a small uh, portion of the advertising targeting facets that we have on LinkedIn. We can target by someone's job title, their department, or what LinkedIn calls job function, their level of seniority in the organization, skills on their profile, groups they're members of. We can target by company name, for those of you who are interested in account-based marketing, uh, company size, company industry, the general demographics you expect. We can do, uh, we can upload lists of email addresses to target. We can upload lists of company names. We can do retargeting, all of that. Um, but I think what's really interesting is the bottom right here, the fact that we can do al almost all of these in combination, or we can use exclusions. So combinations would be something like, I want to target this job title at this company size in this geography. Something like that would make your audience tighter, uh, a more targeted audience. And then an exclusion, I like to think of, about this as maybe cutting off the bad parts of a piece of fruit, like an apple. Uh, you're leaving the majority of your audience there, but you're just slicing off parts that you don't want. For instance, if you have a list of competitors that you might not want to see your ads, you can specifically add your competitor's company name as an exclusion to any campaign you run, and then you're flying under the radar. They can't tell what it is you're doing, and that's super cool. All right, so when you go to start targeting people on LinkedIn, there's uh, it's a little bit difficult, I think, for most people to you know, look at the 23 plus targeting facets that they have and go, all right, which one should I use? Well, I'll walk you through the four main ones that we rely on. And then of course, there are all kinds of options if you wanna go really ninja and go beyond this. So the first that most people think to go to is job title. It's the most precise of all of the targeting, but you can see that it has a low volume and a high expense. So why is that? Well, the reason why is because LinkedIn doesn't understand everyone's job titles. In fact, I'm assuming that they only understand about 40% of them. So that means there's not very much inventory out there because they gave us this free form field that we can write whatever we want. The expense is also high because job title is the first thing that everyone goes to. Uh, if you're you know, just getting into B2B marketing, you're going to look at job title and go, oh, good, I know our job titles. So very little uh, inventory with a lot of people vying for it. That drives the cost up. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have job function with seniority. So for, the, for this sort of example, let's go with maybe IT. So we want to go with like IT managers, for instance. We could target the job function of IT and add a seniority of manager onto this. And this is going to be very broad. Job function is essentially what department you work in. So anywhere under the umbrella of IT, you'd get matched here. Because it's so broad, the volume's going to be high, which is great if you have large budgets or are trying to reach as many people as possible. But this is the lowest cost one because there's the least amount of competition for it. 
Then the next two, you've got skills and groups, which are kind of both moderate in the expense. They're kind of in between. Uh, skills are pretty broad because each member has up to 50 skills. So you know, each person being split into 50 attributes, you can imagine how easy that would be to, uh, to grow an audience size. And groups. Groups are very precise because you've got to go out of your way to go and join a group. So let's say there's a group uh, about um, about IT, for instance. I know I could target members of IT groups with a seniority of manager, and that's also going to get me my, my IT manager. Now, why am I telling you to target the same person four different ways? Well, it's all for efficiency, because if I can find out over time, let's say I, I run uh, all four of these different campaign types targeting uh, IT managers for let's say a month or two, I'm going to start to see little pockets arise where I go, ooh, my skills campaign is cheaper on a cost per click basis, but my uh, conversion rate is low. Or my job titles are really expensive, but the conversion rate is really high. Or the sales team is praising the lead quality. So these are certain things you can learn. If you can find out the pocket that tends to be the most active for you, then you can start funneling all of your budget towards the most efficient part. And I guarantee your competitors are not equipped to do this. Uh, you'll be light years ahead of them. Uh, getting a lower cost per conversion, um, lower cost per lead on, on everything you do, gives you a real leg up on the competition. So then we start having the ad formats. These are the, the message that you decide to use, the M in, in ammo. Uh, the very first uh, ad format I would recommend using and trying out is sponsored content. Now these are the ones that show up right in the news feed and they are by far the most versatile of all the ad formats because they have all these different variants and I'll show you the variants here in a minute. But what you need to understand here about the news feed is you're probably going to have about 80% or more of, of the traffic is going to come from mobile users. You get a big beautiful image with some text above that we call an intro and some text below that we call a headline. And keep in mind this benchmark. If you're getting over about 0.4% click-through rate, uh, so just a little under half a percent, um, that's pretty good. Like anything over that is good and you should be proud of yourselves for it. If you're at that or under, maybe it's worth pausing, rethinking your strategy, launching something new. So then you have text ads. Uh, while I recommend that everyone start on sponsored content. Text ads, I only end up recommending about 15% of the time. Um, they are LinkedIn's lowest risk ad format, but uh, they're also not super productive. So I'll explain what that means. You can see that here by this click-through rate, if you have anything around a 0.03% click-through rate uh, or above, you are doing great. And that's kind of silly. Um, to put that into perspective, that's only three clicks out of every 10,000 times this ad is seen. They're tucked over in the right rail. You can see that section here on the screenshot called promoted with the three little uh, 50 by 50 pixel images. Um, those are what they actually look like. And I didn't zoom in here because I want you to see how hard they are really to see. And that's why they have such a low click through rate. But the reason why they are the lowest risk, number one, they are the uh, cheapest ad format. While you might pay six to nine dollars a click from sponsored content, you're probably going to pay three to five dollars a click for text ads. It's also desktop only, which means if you put something up there that was that was a problem, you wouldn't pay very much for, for it, and not very many people would click it. So it's um, and it's desktop only, which means you know only twenty percent of LinkedIn's traffic is even going to see these. So very low risk if you want to test something out. I wrote up here 50 by 50 pixel image, but LinkedIn has actually recently changed this to 100 by 100. Uh, so you won't be you won't uh, be at any sort of disadvantage for uploading only 50 by 50. But sometimes when they show the ads, uh, they'll they'll show two bigger rather than three smaller, like you see. Okay, the next is sponsored in-mail, and I get a lot of questions about this. So uh, I'll lay out the pros and cons for you. As opposed to the other two ad formats that I just showed you, this one you pay per send rather than per click. So on the other ones, someone you're only getting charged when someone is taking action and showing some initiative, uh, showing some interest. 
with InMail, you're going to pay 35 to 85 cents just to send this into someone's messaging box, their, like their LinkedIn in, uh, email. But um, there's no guarantee that they're going to see that they got it or open it or click on it. And so if you start doing the math, you know, LinkedIn talks about these being pretty low cost because, you know, 35 to 85 cents doesn't sound like very much. But when you do that math, let's say an average of about 50 cents per send, only 50% of them open, and then only about 3% of those who open will click on it. If you do that calculation, you come out to a cost per click of like 30 to $50, which is incredibly high. So because of that, I don't recommend this to more than probably about 5% of advertisers. The 5% that I do recommend, it's because they have a very special offer, something that feels intensely personal. Um, the guide, the heuristic that I use is if you got this message as an email, would you be excited about it or would you call it spam? If you'd be excited about it, then this is going to be the right, the right uh, ad format for you. Um, it's going to come across as personal. Uh, if it feels like, you know, because of who you are in the industry, we want to give you early access or a sneak peek at something, then you know, some, everyone's going to want to open it, everyone's going to click on it, and because of that, you'll get a really, really low cost per conversion. If you have just, you know, talk to my sales rep or download this white paper, uh, this is going to be an insanely expensive ad format, and I would avoid it at all costs. Okay, then you have dynamic ads. Uh, I recommend this even less than I do the other um, the other ad formats. Um, I actually can't find a good use for dynamic ads. They get click-through rates that are low like text ads and they have costs per click that are higher than sponsored content so it's just kind of a bad combination they're expensive and they don't do much so because of those i i like to just tell people uh, avoid it entirely but they are a little bit cool they can stick your picture in there and one of the baked in calls to action can be to follow a company page so if you want company page followers this might be the ad format you have to use uh, but it will be very expensive on a per follower basis okay let's get into the variants of sponsored content now there's something called lead gen form ads where you can literally attach a form right to the ad itself so someone can convert on your ad um, they can become a lead they can you know download a white paper or whatever without ever having to go to your landing page so if you have a landing page that just your the question uh, you're questioning how good the conversion rate is uh, if it's you know a blocker or getting in the way then you could always skip it entirely and have people go right through this lead gen form ad uh, this can be attached to both uh, sponsored content all variations as well as the uh, sponsored in mail so keep that in mind some great things about it first of all it has a 10 to 50 percent higher conversion rate than exactly the same thing on a landing page and you're asking, I'm sure, what contributes to that? Well, LinkedIn makes this really easy to fill out. They will autofill everything that they have for you in there. So if you're asking for email address, first name, last name, uh, company name, company size, industry, all those types of things, LinkedIn's going to automatically fill out the form for the prospect, and all they have to do is hit submit. Now, if you ask for phone number or a work email address, for instance, um, they, the prospect will have to type that in themselves, but pretty cool. Uh, it, there's also a high degree of trust while people are still on LinkedIn. <clears throat> so uh, that's going to contribute to 10 to 50% higher conversion rates or on the same budget, 10 to 50% more leads, which is pretty cool. Now, there are certainly cons here. They're a little bit difficult to work with as you're managing the account. Uh, because that traffic never lands on your website, you can't track it with UTM parameters if you were already doing that. Uh, you can't retarget the traffic. And a lot of times the sales team will call these of lower quality than a, a, than a landing page conversion. And I think what contributes to that is through a lead gen form ad, someone decided to convert with you after reading like 150 characters of text. Whereas on your landing page, they got a chance to kind of know, like, and trust you a little bit. Your landing page made a larger impression on them. Uh, they got to click around and maybe see more about your team, more of an explanation as to why this is valuable. Um, whereas on a lead gen form ad, they hit submit and 
you know, sometimes the sales team will say, hey, this person doesn't even remember filling out a form. Well, they definitely filled it out, but LinkedIn just made it so easy for them. Okay, next variation, we have video ads. You're going to pay six to 14 cents per person that watches at least two seconds of the video. So if you're familiar with Facebook ads, you'll know that that is automatically like, like six times more or more uh, higher on a cost per view than you'd get there. Um, so be aware, I mean, this is definitely something you want to test your video creative beforehand. You want to know that this is going to work really well before you test it on LinkedIn, just because the stakes are a little bit higher. Same process, though, as doing any other sort of social ads. You want to make sure your subtitles are either baked into the video, like hard-coded, or you're uploading a .srt file for subtitles, because it will play muted. And then as of right now, there's no retargeting. So if I send someone a video ad and they decide not to click, I can't do anything with them. I can't continue to follow up. I can't show them the next video in the sequence, nothing like that. Uh, so that's probably coming in the next quarter or two, I would imagine. But as of right now, uh, I tell most people avoid LinkedIn ads until you have, or sorry, LinkedIn's video ads until uh, they have retargeting on video just to make the most of that view. You don't want to just throw your money into a dark hole. Next, you have carousel ads. Uh, these are it might look familiar because of Facebook. Uh, Facebook's had these for several years, but it's basically the ability to, to have multiple cards in a single ad so someone could scroll. So think of something like, you know, obviously e-commerce isn't a great fit here, but imagine if you had like, here's our selection of shoes in one card, here's our selection of dresses, here's our selection of men's pants and belts, uh, all in different cards and someone could interact with the ad. Uh, I don't recommend these for most because it takes four times the amount of work to, to build these if you've got four cards than it would be just a static single image ad. Um, but you don't get much of a benefit here. Uh, it's not like your costs come down or your click through rate goes up all too much for, with these. Uh, it just seems to be a little bit more work than it's worth. So, um, But if you have a story to tell, if you could take you know, four to six or whatever of those back panels and stitch them together into a story that made sense uh, and got really creative, that's when I could see these being really useful. But unless your designer is going crazy for you and, and you know, giving you some really awesome stuff, uh, I'd probably just maybe test into these later, but start with the single image ones for right now. Okay, I mentioned offers, uh, how they are the most important part of LinkedIn ads. So let's jump right into that and spend some time. The offer, you know, it's kind of a funny, a funny kind of term for this, but it's basically whatever it is that you're asking the user to do or, or offering to them. So if you offer to someone something like, here's a free blog post, read it, or come check out our free infographic, those are really nice things to do, and you're going to build some goodwill. They're very, very low frictions because most people are, are willing to do that. You're not really asking for anything. But because blog posts and infographics have a very inherent weak call to action, you're going to end up with a very low conversion rate. And so if you're going to pay LinkedIn 6 to $9 a click anyway, uh, you're going to get you know a really low conversion rate from something like a blog post. And it's going to make your cost per lead really high. So you know you're doing really good work for your industry, but uh, but you're not seeing the conversions. And at some point, you're going to look at it and go, wow, $1,000 per lead. Oh, this, this isn't great. Uh, and you'll probably decide to shut it off. So avoid the top of this funnel, the low friction part. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have high friction offers, like take, uh, take a demo, try a free trial, uh, open your wallet for some reason, talk to a sales rep. All of those types of offers are really high friction. You're asking uh, you know, really for someone to jump directly into the sales process um, without offering much benefit in between. And some of you may be thinking, oh, a trial, that feels like a lot of, uh, a lot of value to someone. They get to try your software for free. Um, there's uh, there's always a really big uh, hurdle to get over when you're 
going to be trying new software. Um, so anyway, it is a, a pretty big ask. So where do you want to land? Well, you want to land in the sweet spot here in between, where you're providing something of value first. It's usually content. Uh, and all you're requiring of them is basically you know, first name, last name, email, for instance. So this could be like, here's a free checklist or a cheat sheet, a guide, a white paper, an ebook, a free in-person event, a webinar, all of those types of offers tend to work really really well here you can get your exact right audience to interact with you give you their email address so that you can start a conversation that eventually turns into a sales conversation and a relationship so keep that in mind uh, you know obviously the offer that converts the best is going to be the most useful so if you're trying to figure out what kind of content should I use here go talk to the sales team go ask them hey what are the questions that we get all the time what are the the um, the things that are keeping our prospects up at night and if you can figure that out create a piece of content that solves that and chances are you'll do really well to put this into perspective if you have a great performing content offer you might convert at 20 to 25 percent, um, which could bring your costs per conversion on LinkedIn down into, let's call it like the, the 20 to 25 dollar range. Uh, if you're going to show someone an offer on the bottom of this funnel, like, uh, you know, a really high friction offer, you'll probably end up with a conversion rate of one and a half to four uh, percent, which brings your, your cost per conversion into the 150 to 200 dollar range. So, Definitely it's worth starting with content first, provide that value first, and get 10 times the amount of people in your database, uh, you know, at, at people who now love you because you gave them awesome content. All right, next, let's talk about retargeting a little bit. Because if you're paying six to nine dollars a click from LinkedIn for the most premium traffic, you want to do the most with it possible. So LinkedIn does have retargeting, this ability to <clears throat> uh, stay in front of someone, add them to an audience if they've been to your website, and then show them a specific ad later. LinkedIn has this, but it's pretty weak. Um, someone will only last in an audience for 90 days max, and you know if you're paying six to nine dollars a click just to have that traffic uh, disappear so you can't do anything with it after just a single quarter, that's no good. Um, it's also cookie-based, which you know, a lot of advertisers are talking about how the cookie is kind of going away here pretty soon uh, because all these anti-privacy laws are starting to um, to kind of push put pressure on on the browsers to kind of get rid of them. And I think really the biggest nail in the coffin for me around LinkedIn's retargeting is users don't hang out on LinkedIn. And so if retargeting is all about staying top of mind, staying in front of someone and reminding them, uh, if someone's just coming back to LinkedIn three or four times a month, even if you showed your ad to them all three or four times that they log in, you're still not making a huge impression and you're still not spurring them to action. So what I recommend is drive your traffic from LinkedIn and yes, go ahead and use LinkedIn's retargeting. It won't hurt, but make sure sure that your landing page is set up to uh, retarget them both on Facebook and on Google. You can use exactly the same logic, but Facebook is going to catch them uh, wherever they are on social media. That's all of Facebook, all of Instagram, and Google's going to catch them wherever they are on um, the Google Display Network, which is essentially like most web pages on the internet. So probably not realistically not most, but you get access to a lot of inventory. So very, uh, you know, if this is something you want to get into, if you want to try advertising yourself, I, I want to give you our free checklist. So if you go to b2linked.com slash checklist, you can download our eight point checklist. It's the same one we use to uh, onboard a new client. Um, it's everything that you need in order to get started. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, I do ask for your email address, but if you tick that box uh, that says, you know, I want someone to contact me. That's the only time you'd ever hear from us. Uh, if you don't tick that box, you'll never hear from us ever again. This is just pure value for you. So uh, that being said, I'll, I'll pop this to a, a Q&A slide. But right here, you've got my email address, my Twitter handle, and the website. Any questions, feel free to email me. Um, so I, I'm really excited that you, you joined us today on, on this session. Uh, thanks for taking your time to learn about LinkedIn ads. Again, one of my, my biggest passions. And absolutely enjoy the rest of the Get Client Summit. All right, we'll talk later. Thanks so much. Bye.